So there's a comment left on one of my videos recently where I showed you how to create your own custom post types without the need for a plugin. And we basically edited the functions PHP file. The comment basically said, if I was gonna do this, I wouldn't do it that way, I'd create my own plugin. Well, that kind of piqued my interest. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do just that. We're gonna create our first WordPress plugin to create our custom post types, taxonomies, and all those kinds of good things. So if you're interested, join me, and I'm gonna take you through the entire process right now. So in the plugin section of my WordPress site, you can see the last plugin we have is WP Tuts CPT. This is my custom plugin, and it does one simple job. It sets up the taxonomies and it sets up the custom post types. And we can see those in the things like dealerships. If I scroll up a little bit, you can see I've got vehicles. Inside vehicles, we've got manufacturers, we've got an options page set up. So all of these things are custom post types. The reason why I've put it into a plugin is something that was suggested, which makes a lot of sense. If you do this in the functions PHP file of your theme, if you change themes, then you kind of lose that and you've got to start again. If you create yourself a nice, simple, clean plugin to do exactly the same thing, to reference those normal functions to create our custom post types and taxonomies and so on, it's independent of everything. So we can change themes, we can add plugins, whatever we want, and it stands alone. Now, do you need to worry about updating this? Well, not really, because all you're doing is creating custom post types. There's no real functions other than that inside there. So once they're created and registered, that's all it's doing. So providing all your code is nice and clean, you should be good forevermore. Okay, with that being said, how do we go about creating an exactly the same kind of thing as this? So let's just take a look at that right now. So first things first, I've gone ahead and deleted that. So you see now that once that's been deleted, all of my custom post types, my taxonomies have all been taken out of the left-hand side because they're no longer being referenced. Okay, so once we've done that, we need to get into the file manager for our particular site. Now you can do this in multiple different ways. I'm going to be using SiteGround's file manager, but you can use an FTP, the file manager that comes with whatever hosting account you're using, doesn't really matter. The principle is pretty much the same. So in the file manager now of my particular site inside SiteGround, so what I'm gonna do is open up the public HTML folder, which is where all of our site structure resides. And inside there, we're gonna have a couple of folders. We're gonna have WP admin content and includes. If we open up the WP content inside there, we're looking for the plugins folder. So all we need to do is click on that and that will open up and load in all the plugin folders we have set inside this particular site that we're looking at. So if we scroll through, you can see there's all of the different folders. So what we need to do now, first of all, is create the folder for our plugin and just basically give it a name. So what we're gonna do is create a new folder. We're gonna call this WP Tuts dash CPT. So we know exactly what it is. So we'll click on confirm. We've now created the folder to put any files we want to work with inside there. So let's just open that up. Just double click to go into it and we have an empty folder obviously so the next thing we're going to do is create a new file so this needs to be a php file and we're going to call this again wp tuts dash cpt dot php so that's going to be the file that's going to contain our functions and all those kinds of good things click on confirm we now have our file so all we need to do is click to edit that and we've got a blank file now, there's various different things you can put inside here, but it's bare, bare minimum, we just need to do this. We need to open the PHP tags, and then everything that comes after inside this forward slash and the start is just basic information. So you can see, by default, all we really need to put in is the name of the plugin. So we can just say this is WP Tuts CPT. Okay, so let's just get rid of that full colon for stopping there. So that's all we need to do. We've basically created the most important file, in this case, the only file we need. So once we've done that, we now need to put some functions in there. So how do we get these functions? Well, you could write them yourself, and if you're more than comfortable working with that, you probably don't need to follow along with this tutorial because this is gonna be way too basic for you. But for most of us that don't really need or know how to write the entire code out, there's a couple of ways in which we can kind of cheat and make our lives a lot easier. So I'm gonna show you a couple of those right now. So the first method, and I've shown this before in another video tutorial on how to basically do away with plugins to create your custom post types, is to install CPT UI, set up your post types, set up your taxonomies and everything you want to create inside there, and then we can output that code. So I've got a duplicate site here with CPT UI installed. And all I need to do is come into the tool section. And from there, we can come over to the get code option. And each one of our taxonomies, each one of our custom post types, 
all of the code that's relevant to that is inside each one of these individual boxes. What we could do is we could copy that over into a text file and then just paste that into our newly created plugin PHP file. So that's the first way in which you can do it. If you don't want to go to the time and effort of actually installing a plugin and then deactivating it afterwards, just in case you leave anything behind and you don't want to do that, there's a couple of online resources you can do pretty much exactly the same thing. So first of these online sites is Generate WP. Generate WP has a lot of free options. There are some paid for options. If you want to get full access to it, by all means, go ahead and do that. But if all you want to do is create taxonomies and custom post types for your custom plugin, they're free. So what we could do is we can easily come in and we can say we want to take a look at content, for example. And inside the content section, we're going to have the short codes generator, post status generator, post type taxonomy generator. If we come and take a look at admin, you can see inside there, we've got settings, we've got quick tags generator, a ton of different options. The second one we've got access to is hasty or WP hasty. And this basically does the same thing. It's just visually slightly different. So if we wanted to come in and create our new custom post type, well, we can do exactly that. We've got custom post type generator. We can click inside there. And then what we have is a list of questions that we need to fill out and the sort of check boxes and stuff like that. And you can see on the right hand side, it'll show all the code. Now, this is pretty much identical to what CPT UI would do if you use the first method I showed you. But what you can do is you can fill out all the relevant information inside here, then simply copy the code over for all of the post types you want to create and all the taxonomies you want to create as well. I'm not going to go through showing you how to set these up because every use case is going to be different. But if you'd like to see some tutorials on these two websites and how to use them, let me know in the comment section below and I'll take a look and put some content together to show you exactly how to use those specific websites. Okay, so let's just say now that you've got the code that you want and you're ready to actually start creating your new custom plugin. What's next? But well, we need to go back into the file manager and from there we now need to copy that code that we've just taken from any of those methods I've just shown you and drop that into our text file, our PHP file. So I've gone ahead and done that. You can see there's all of my code. So all I need to do is copy this from the function section at the top right the way down through. So what we're doing is we're just copying already predefined functions to create and set up our custom post types and our taxonomies. So let's make a little space underneath here, drop that in and we are pretty much done. All of our code is inside there, ready to start working. So what we need to do now is just save this file. So we hit save on there, and that should be pretty much everything done. So if we hop back over into the dashboard of WordPress into our plugin section, our new plugin should be in there ready for us. And there we go. We're in the plugin section. If we look at the bottom, there's our CPT WordPress plugin we just created. All we need to do is activate it. Once we activate it, we'll have all those custom post types available. Let's hit activate. There we go. There's our vehicles with all of our taxonomies inside there. There's our dealerships. Everything is set up, including our options page. So we've basically created our first plugin. It has a very simple job to do, but it's doing it very easily. Now you'll notice that at the moment, all the extra information, which tells us exactly where it does, maybe version numbers, if you're keeping version control of changes you may make to a site where you expand maybe the custom post types and the taxonomies, well, we just need to add an extra little bit of information into our PHP file. So let's just hop back over into our file, scroll back up to the top, and when we created this initial basic setup with just the plugin name, we can expand upon that and put more information in there. I want my text file back up. I'm going to scroll to the top of this. You can see I've expanded all that out by doing things like plugin name, plugin URI, description, version, author, and author URI. You have to make sure that it's structured in that way. What comes after the full colon is entirely up to you because that's your user entered data. And you don't have to use all of these. You can use any of them you want to. But if you want to keep track of what's going on and what a particular plugin does, it makes a lot of sense. Also, if you're obviously you're working with multiple people, you may want them to know exactly what this plugin does because it might be a bit ambiguous to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that from this. So we'll right click and choose copy. We'll replace what we have at the top here, making sure that we don't accidentally leave any extraneous code behind. And we've got the PHP opening tag at the beginning. So everything's in place. I'll just simply hit save on there. We'll hop back over to our site, into our plugin section, reload that. And once that's reloaded, we'll see now we have all that extra information telling us exactly what version, 
the link through to our site and what the plugin actually does. So you've now created your first WordPress plugin. It does a very simple job, like I say, but it's a plugin. So what I would always suggest is if you are going down the route of creating or using functions, maybe for things like WooCommerce, where you want to change the way that works, anything that's not basically using the theme functions file, maybe create a little plugin like this just to make your life a little easier. You could even create a global plugin that's just, for example, WP Tuts, you know, sort of customization codes. And then you could put all of your functions inside there knowing that's where everything is. And if you want to copy that over to another site to do exactly the same kind of thing, well, you've got a nice simple little plugin. You can copy that folder, upload it, activate it, and you are pretty much done. So there we go. We've now gone ahead and created our first custom plugin for WordPress. Hopefully you've seen that it's not as complicated as you may have first thought, and it also has a lot of benefits doing it this way. But as always, if you'd like to see more content like this, let me know in the comment section below, because I'd love to find out the kind of things you'd like to see in future videos. As always, if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this, or anything we've covered on the channel, drop those in the comment section below as well. All applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.